Hello and welcome to Bend the Knee, a Song of Ice and Fire podcast. I am Sir Matt, the Bud Knight. And I am Sir Ezra, the Watchful. And friends, we are back with another Winds of Winter predictions slash theory. Where will the Blackfish be headed in the Winds of Winter? Yeah, as uh, you sent me this, and uh, we are just going to plow through it here. It's kind of interesting, right? Uh, it's a good question, really, where because uh, he's a character that... We are trying to dive in more and more to characters that you and I haven't talked about quite so much. And I can say that the Blackfish is definitely uh, one of them. Right. You know, I, I, I know people. He's kind of a fan favorite. People like him. Um, and I, as I was reading through this, I got to one interesting point where I was like, OK, now I'm hooked. You know, like when you first start off, it's kind of boring. Who cares? Blackfish. Where's he go? It matters. You know, I mean, he is connected, could be connected to Sansa, Lady Stoneheart. Um a lot of different places. He had orders from Rob. Uh, he's on the loose, so it's it is a it's a big deal. So yeah, I'm I'm happy to 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 go through this and just think about and add our own kind of reflection and, and commentary on on this really good theory. Yeah, exactly. So this comes to us uh, as a Reddit theory uh, just a few months ago, right? Where will a certain Tully go in the winds of winter? So uh, Brennan Blackfish Tully is on the run. Nobody knows where he's going. And it uh, seems like this had been talked maybe a little bit about on Reddit. So here we go. So taking a look at the map of Westeros, right? So he returned to Hoster Tully's chair, pulled over the map of the Trident and flattened it beneath his golden hand. Where would I go if I were the Blackfish? Lord Commander, a guardsman stood in the open door. Lady Westerling and her daughter are uh, without as you commanded. Jamie shoved the map aside. A feast for crows, Jamie seven. So luckily for us, we weren't disturbed uh, by Sybil Spicer, and we were able to continue our analysis until we were sure which path Brendan Tully would take. So some basic deductions. Here we go. Obviously, no one expects the Blackfish to be moving south or west, not only because the river that Brendan escaped from, which is the Red Branch, runs northwest, but because these routes would bring him closer to the Reach and to Westerlands, controlled by King's Rob's enemies, only if there was a major strategy, Blackfish would follow these directions, but such a plan doesn't exist. On the other hand, there is an awesome, uh, they go on here to say, referencing another article, uh, for, I guess from the Tower of Hand, called North is No Place for a Back Blackfish, which gives us very compelling reasons that Undle, Uncle Brendan would be heading north. In addition to the points uh, that are brought up in that other article, they said they'd like to add the deceased king and the north created a specific title of protector of the southern marches for Blackfish just before leaving for the Red Wedding. In other words, the last order Blackfish received was to protect the southern border of Rob's kingdom, the Riverlands. And because he's very stubborn, everyone knows that he will return and fight. So even a comment here uh, from the text, he did not doubt that the Blackfish meant to continue the fight. A Feast for Crows, Jamie Seven. So here we go. So some uh, speculation as to why Brendan would not stay in the Riverlands. Speculation that Brendan will join the Brotherhood without banners is very popular among the fandom. According to some readers, all leads indicate to Blackfish and leading Stoneheart's gang in an attack to Forley Prester's convoy, or at least that'll that he'll help the organiz uh, organize guerrillas that will be divisive to overthrow the Lannisters in the Riverlands. Uh, what these theorists tend to forget is that Brennan Blackfish and the Brotherhood have never had any contact, uh, and now that the siege is over, neither of them know where the other one is. Uh, most people like to think that the Riverlands is like a small backyard. However, if it is true that Westeros is the size of, say, South America, which is what some people have sort of speculated, then the Riverlands from Neck to Stony Sep, from Cape to, uh, to Eagles of Maidenpool, uh, to Maidenpool may well be compared to several countries in the American continent and could be larger than the size of, say, Texas. And they reference uh, the World of Ice and Fire map, uh, which actually really cool. I think it's called the Maps of Ice and Fire, right? I think you have that, don't you, Ez? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no matter how good gorillas, uh, how good gorillas are, you know, in the Brotherhood without banners, finding Brendan alone and on the run without a day's advantage. 
uh, which Jamie's speculation says he could be 10 leagues ahead, would be a colossal task. It is certain that the Brotherhood without banners has many eyes in the region, but the Blackfish will certainly disguise himself at the first opportunity he has and will act with utmost caution because he will not be able to tell loyalists from turn cloaks while he's on the run. Not to mention that his own Brotherhood without uh that the own brotherhood without branners has had many problems in determining the location of its own leader. Even when it was at its peak, yeah. this was the only person. <laughs> yeah. They should meet with some ease, but that was simply not true. In, uh, indeed, after capturing Aria, the brotherhood had to wander for three entire chapters, consulting with several informants and allies before finding Barrick and Darian. Thus the brotherhood simply happening to find uh, and meet Brendan, like out and about, sounds like a huge stroke of luck. Not to mention that the Brotherhood is busy hanging Lannisters and Freys, following Jamie and defending themselves from any other outlaw groups. So the chance of the Brotherhood being able to organize itself efficiently for such a task is small, like is considerably small. So the Brotherhood's goal now seems to be to move uh, west and not east and freeing Edmure es uh, escapes Blackfish's priorities. After all, if the fray threat of hanging his nephew wasn't reason enough to make the old knight surrender River Run, then it's not Edmure moving safely to Casterly Rock that would make him think it's a good time for a rescue. Mm. On the other hand, the Riverland Lords should not offer any support to Brendan, and he knows it very well. He prepared for a long siege while he was at River Run, one in which uh, much of the Riverland houses participated in supporting the Lannisters. No, the notable houses that did not attend were themselves under siege, being Blackwood and Malister, or sieging on behalf of the Lannisters and Bracken. But it's not just because they allied themselves with the Lannisters that the Riverland Lords would no longer support Blackfish. The region is devastated. The first blow of the War of the Five Kings happened there as well, and the worst of the carnage. If Brendan uh, shows up at anyone's gates asking, asking that they should fight with him in the middle of winter with no other reward than honor and glory, he'll seem like a beggar. By now, any Riverland Lord with a minute... Uh, with a minimum wit should have start, uh, started saving all resources that they can. So comment here, snow in the riverlands. If it was snowing here, it could well be snowing on Lannisport as well. And King's landing winter is marching South and half our granaries are empty. Any crops still in the fields were doomed. There would be no more plantings, no more hopes of one last harvest. He found himself wondering what his father would do to feed the realm before he remembered that Tywin was dead. Uh, Feast for Crows, Jamie seven. On the other hand, most of the Riverland nobility is young and Blackfish has been out of the region for 15 years. Sure. They can certainly know the stories of his feats during the war of the nine penny Kings and were able to have a glimpse of the powers or the prowess during Rob's campaign, but as, as much as Brandon may have proven brilliant in his strategies, he is now just an old soldier knocking on the door empty handed and demanding much more than they can give. Therefore, this scenario does not seem favorable to the Blackfish. Let's remember that Jamie followed Brendan's trail, but verify that the old knight didn't knock on Tito's Blackwood's door. This means the Blackfish just kept swimming away. But where to? Well, to a place where lords were thirsty for war, their barns full. Blackfish's own blood was in power, and the old knight was very well known uh, and had recent connections. So uh, moving on here, uh, Brienne, Brienne explains no man's land. So almost all explanations regarding Blackfish's route can be found in Brienne chapters. At first glance, it may sound strange, but you will see that there is an absurd amount of clues in these chapters, so big they can't easily be discarded. And it gives new meaning to the Maiden of Tart's wanderings. We start with a quote which foreshadowed that Brendan is heading to the Valley of Aaron. In it, Brienne is talking about Sansa, but please notice that the passage mentions all the Tully. So it's from A Feast from Crows, Brienne 2. Brienne knew that Sansa still had an uncle and a bastard half-brother on the wall. Serving in the Night's Watch, another uncle, Edmure Tully, was a captive at the Twins, but his uncle, Sir Brendan, still had held River Run, and Lady Catelyn's younger sister ruled the Vale. Blood calls to blood. 
Uh, another quote, one that demonstrates that it's easy to reach the valley after passing Lannister lines in the Riverlands. The wall was too far. Well, the wall was for, too far. Surely, and a bleak and bitter place besides. And to reach River Run, the girl would need to cross the war torn Riverlands and pass through the Lannister siege lines. The Eyrie would be simpler, and Lady Liza would surely welcome her sister's daughter. Uh, so we know that there are many dangers on the high road, as we can see from Catelyn's journey in A Game of Thrones. However, the high road is now closed because there's snow. The high road had to the Vale is closed by snow, even if he could get past the mountain clans. Beast, uh, it's Brienne 5, A Feast for Crows. Thereby, Brienne has to uh, imagine to, in the previous quote, was by sea, not by land. This is what our maiden reveals uh, in a thought during her stay in Maiden Pool. Gulltown was only a short voyage away. From there, she could make her way to the Erie easily enough. So all Blackfish needed to do was get past the Bay of Crab, get to the Bay of Crabs. He escaped the Lannister swimming the Red Fork, and the river, this river flows to the bay. If Brendan Tully takes his path, reaching the Valley of Arryn would be pretty simple. But we are talking about the Blackfish, I hear you shouting. An outlaw, an enemy of the crown on the run and chased by the Lord Commander of the King's Guard himself. He, how could he travel to the Maiden Pool incognito? Again, the answers can be found with Brienne chapters. Sir Hyle drew a roll of sheepskin from his boot, pushed a pushed the sausage aside and unrolled it. It proved to be a map. The hound butchered three of his brother's men at the old one at the crossroads here. He led the raid on the salt pans here. He trapped salt pans with his finger. He may be trapped. The frays are up here at the twins. Derry and Harrenhal are south across the trident. Uh, west, he's got the Blackwoods and the Brackens fighting, and Lord Randall's here at Maidenpool. It's from Brienne 5, Feast for Crows. In making this presentation with the map, Sir Hyle ends up revealing to the reader the size of no man's land, right, uh, that sprung in Riverland's border with the Crown's land. Brienne herself had entered this no man's land as soon as she leaves Duskendale. It's not too far to Maidenpool, but the road is perilous these days. The further they had come from Duskendale, the emptor of the road had been. The only travelers they'd glimpsed had melted away into the woods before they reached them. Save for a big bearded septon, they, they met walking south with two score foot sore followers. Such inns as they passed had either been sacked and abandoned or turned into armed camps. The deranged lawless country is where many outlaws, such as Rorg's gang, can move around unnoticed, and if and if such huge gang can, so could our lone fish. We have to admit one thing, however. Brienne finds Randall's mounted guards right after Duskendale, and that should be an indication that the Tarly is watching the road. So yesterday they had encountered one of Lord Randall's patrols, bristering with long longbows and lances. The horsemen had surrounded them while their captain questioned Brienne, but in the end, he'd let them continue on their way. These outlaws won't dare come too near to Maidenpool, not so long as Lord Tarly has rule there. Yet, if Randall Tarly himself, who admits that, is as good as his men were, he would have never had um, he'd never make it to the outlaw bosses. Cle Clegane's turned outlaw. He rides with Barrett and Darian now, it would seem. Or not, the tales vary. Show me where they are hiding. I will gladly slit their bellies open, pull their entrails out, and burn them. We've hanged dozens of outlaws, but the leader still eludes us. Clegane, Dondarian, the Red Priest, and now this woman, Stoneheart. How do you propose we to find them when I cannot? It's Brand 5, a feature crows. So it is safe to admit that Maidenpool and Derry are surveillance islands in the midst of a lar of a large sort of no man's land. That's where like all of the fighting, right, and everything is taking place, which runs from uh, Baldacasco to Bracken Blackwood territory. Yes, yes. Yeah. So if um, <clears throat> this is this is a great theory. There's a, there's a map, and if you want, you can click on it. I'll give you a little bit of a break here because this is a, a long theory and essentially to to sum all of that up, it is the Brienne chapters as she wanders that highlight a path forward for uh, Brendan Tully. The Blackfish could could make his way through. And uh, Matt's got up here on the screen, just like like no man's land uh, as, as as it's described in those chapters. So um, 
besides a few of of uh, like just a, patrols or whatever that you might have to get past. But it's interesting that this is a a, a way in which he could travel uh, and not be recognized or known or rumor could get out that the Blackfish is on the move because, again, Jamie is hunting him. He's an outlaw. There's probably a reward out, all those different things. So he has to, you know, uh, navigate no man's land. I like that idea. And that's a, that's attention to to detail in those chapters that like really we're not thinking about that with with the Brienne chapters. You're supposed to be just thinking about where's Sansa? Where are we going next? OK, yeah, that we get there's carnage, destruction. But realizing there's there's not a lot of people here is also like to connect that to another character and say this would be a great place for people to, you know, try to slip through on, you know, uh, but right. to other, then, other individuals. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, OK, let's dive back in here. So Jamie explains a fish out of water. So how do we know that the blackfish has reached the no man's land? Jamie's chapter in a dance of dragons explains it when he is dismantling the siege at Raven tree. Jamie interrogates J uh, Jonas Bracken and Titus Blackwood about the blackfish, but their responses are not very helpful. The first turn is on the Lannister side. The second was under the siege when Brendan fled. Sir Brendan knows better than to come running to me. I am fond of the man. I won't deny that. That won't stop me clapping him in chains if he shows his face near my, me or mine. He knows I've bent the knee. He should have done the same, but he is always a stubborn one. His brother could have told you that. Titus Blackwood has not bent the knee, Jamie pointed out. Might the Blackfish seek refuge at Raven Tree? He might seek it, but to find it, he'd need to get past my siege lines. And last I heard, he hadn't grown wings. Titus had. Titus will be needing refuge himself before much longer. They're down to rats and roots in there. Yet he'll yield before the next full moon. Well, that moves on a little bit. What have you done with Sir Brendan, if I may ask? I offered to let him take the black. Instead, he fled. Jamie smiled. Do you have him here, perchance? No. Would you tell me if you did? It was Titus Blackwood's turn to smile. That's a dance of dragons. Jamie won. Therefore, Jamie came after Brendan and did not find him there. So Blackfish should not have crossed no man's uh, western, no man's lands, western border by now. We imagine that at some point the old knight must have come out of the water so as not to die of hypothermia once that it's winter in Westeros. Blackfish may have stolen clothes and a horse and is now galloping through a land he is familiar with. We like to think that Brendan's traveling along the banks of, tr of the Trident until he is reached at the end of the Kneeling Man, then stole the skiff Brienne left there and navigated uh, until reaching Lord Haraway's town vicinity, where he abandoned the vessel and followed, by, uh, and followed by foot or horseback towards the Bay of Crabs, looking for a ship in the salt pans or maiden pool. If he did go to the salt pans first, he should have witnessed its deplorable conditions, the absolute absence of ships and, uh, and left to Maidenpool. However, the later port town is very well guarded and Tarly is hanging outlaws in, in public executions there. How would Brennan Blackfish go unnoticed by Randall Tarly and his own men? So uh, continuing on here, almost done. So we're going to go back to Brienne, a fish in the pond. First of all, we know Brendan's not stupid. He'll be undercover once he enters Maidenpool. With so many dead bodies on the road, there's plenty of material to build a cover. That's what Brienne said on the way between the Quiet Isle and the Inn at the Crossroads. After that, hardly 100 yards went without a corpse. Some were cloaks of gray or blue or crimson. Through rain and sun had faded them so badly that it was hard to tell one color from another. Others had badges sewn on their breasts. Brienne spied axes, arrows, several salmon, a pine tree, an oak leaf, beetles, bantams, a boar's head, half a dozen tridents, broken men, she realized, dregs from a dozen armies, the leavings of the lords. Therefore, Blackfish couldn't could disguise himself as a Lannister or Mouton men or any of the other houses of the Riverlands since the corpses were largely hanged. The uniforms would not even show bloodstains. With such a disguise, uh, Brennan could spend many days in Maidenpool looking for a ticket to Galltown. See, even Shagwell managed to stay, uh, to stay days in the village right under Randall Tarley's nose, still wearing his jester's clothes under his disguise as the dwarf Septon told Brienne. 
There was a fool at Maidenpool, now that I think of it. He was clad in rags and dirt, and near I could tell, but under the dirt was Motley. First glimpse the fool down by the docks. He had a furtive air to him and took care to avoid Lord Tarley's soldiers. Later, I encountered him again at the Stinking Goose. So searching for a ship would certainly be the most difficult step of the journey. Maiden's Pool Harbor was heavily guarded as Brienne notes herself. Lord Randall's men still prowled the docks as thick as the flies had been on the heads of the three bloody mummers, but their uh, surgeon knew Brienne by sight and let her pass. However, the aforementioned dwarf Septon had already told Brienne that the sailors were picking up stowaways under the nose of Tarly and his men. Lord Tarly's men patrol the uh, part at Maidenpool, but the goose is always full of so uh, sailors, and sailors have been known to smuggle men aboard their ships, if the price is right. The fool was seeking passage for three uh, across the narrow sea. I oft saw him there talking with an oarsman of the galleys. Uh, so then we have uh, Nimble Dick recounts that Shagwell tried uh, this for several nights, not getting caught, even when Tarly's men showed up at the Stinking Goose. He never said, but old Nimble Dick knows the smell of fear. He come here most every night, buying drinks for sailors, making japes, singing little songs. Only one night some men come in with that hunter on their teats. And your fool went white as milk and got quiet till they left. Anyway, if the uh, if Blackfish couldn't get through the ships on the docks, he could bargain his way out of out with some fishermen. Even Brienne looked at the fishing boats as a possibility while she's considering Gull Town as a destination. A galley of galley, uh, a galley, a galleys, and a big two mastered cog were in port, uh, along with a score of little fishing boats. More fishermen were visible out on the bay. Uh, if the stinking goose yields nothing, I will take passage of a ship, she decided. Gulltown was only a short voyage away. From there, she could make her way to the Erie easily enough. And when Brienne was out of town on her way to Crackclaw Point, she witnessed how the near fishing villages were open for business, even despite the recent raids. The traffic continued to dwindle as they moved north and east until finally there were no inns to be found. But then by the Bayside Road was more re weeds than ruts. They, uh, that night, they took shelter in a fishing village. Brienne paid the villagers a few coppers to allow them to bed down in a hay barn. Thus, there are several ways for bl Blackfish to cross the bay and get safely to Galltown. So too long didn't read. Blackfish is heading for the Vale via Galltown. Brienne's chapters tell us how. Yeah, and, and really, <clears throat> the, the last bit almost seems kind of uh, like quite a bit. It's just textual evidence to suggest that there is a way. I've put up an interactive map here, but uh, essentially you're going to come down through River Run, and you. there was noted that No Man's Land here kind of skirts along the top of Heron Hall uh, and tucks its way down here to Duskendale, and that really coming out through salt pans and over on like across the Bay of Crabs, over here to Gull Town, uh, and then on up and around into the Vale of Aaron. So now I think the real important piece here is like, so why would he go back uh, to the Vale? And it's it's just because he's he's been he's familiar with it, right? He also so family duty honor. That is, you know, that's their words. That's the Tully words. And his niece has a child there. He doesn't know about. Sansa necessarily right right so she's undercover still um little finger has her there but he does know that sweet robin is there and i mean so if he's not going to go uh try to free edmure because edmure is on his way to, to, to casterly rock and and he was out there they were going to hang him uh they, they had him displayed out in front of river run that didn't make him budge at all so yeah i feel like where 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 does the other have other family members um, it would be now in his, you know, what would be his great nephew, I guess. Right. Sweet Robin. So, yes, I mean, that I guess that that makes sense. It's a lot to say. Um, and that might be a, a really cool feature to have him in the veil. And for Sansa, when she needs to call for aid and she needs uh, help or something, if she makes it known that, I don't know, uh, she needs supporters. He would be a pretty strong supporter there. And he has a history uh, in, 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 in the veil at the bloody gate. 
Right, and this could drastically change Arya, or excuse me, Sansa's story arc going forward because it's the one that we are like, man, you just can't use anything in the show to sort of even potentially view as a guide uh, for what could happen to her because it's so drastically different. I mean, he could come and be an advisor to her and throw off a lot of like Littlefinger's plans. Yeah, he, maybe he's the one advising her. Maybe you should marry young Griff. And then we and then maybe instead of the Knights of the Vale in the show, how they go retake help retake Winterfell, maybe it's actually taking back control of the river lands. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's an interesting uh, uh, point. Yeah, is it, we've got a I mean, right now they're just going to be controlled by the Lannisters. The phrase are taking over. Uh, we know there's going to be this big revenge on the phrase. A couple other interesting points too. Um, to get into the nitty gritty, I love the commenters when they come in on these theories because they point out really cool things. Uh, the Blackfish, his old title was Knight of the Gate, right? He was there at the Bloody Gate, um, and he was he was there in the Vale. That was his job. He that position was taken over by Sir Donald Wainwood, um, who is the son of Lady Anya Wainwood, who is one of the Lords Declarant. So the Lords Declarant had uh, they've given. Peter Baelish, right, uh, a year to kind of continue to rule. And then um, I believe one of the Waynewoods is somehow related to or has the protection over Harry the heir, who is going to be, you know, uh, possibly, you know, with the, the, the theory is betrothed to or, or whatever, uh, Sansa, that Sansa Lane Stone, that Sansa Stark will end up being engaged to or somehow committed to Harry the heir uh there in, in in the veil again there's all there's theories that sweet robin's being poisoned that things are happening there uh lots of different stuff so just a lot of connections between his old post and people in power and even the potential rising um heir so i think i think it is really likely that, that he could go back there and it seems like there is a path and he could you know somebody also said this is just to kind of poke fun at this at this theory he could just cover dirt on his face and, you know, walk around. He's one man. He could probably get by like in, incognito. But I don't know. Those lines, they stop and they question everyone. You know, if, if you come across a patrol unit and you can't evade them, he's a pretty recognizable guy. All it takes is a couple higher ups to see the blackfish and he's, he's done for. He has to go completely unseen, un, unbothered, if you will. So. Yeah. Yeah. I'm um because remember in the show, his death basically comes when they're retaking winter when they're retaking River Run. Excuse me. Jamie's retaking River Run. So he's already his arc is gonna be way different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So um it'll be interesting to see. I, I have another thing pulled up here too. Someone they mentioned why he wouldn't go North. It is interesting to think people are, are wondering whether or not, you know, where was he in relationship to Rob when uh, Rob was talking about Jon Snow being the heir? Uh, he's totally given the chance to go to, to take the black and to go North and he turns it down. So if he had knowledge that Jon Snow was, was next up in line and, and was, was the heir to, to Winterfell, and he wanted to get that up there. He had a clear path, which is just to take the black. And he, he could have done that. So that's one of the reasons and the arguments as to why he wouldn't cross the neck. Uh, he also had been given orders to be the kind of by, by Rob. And he's a, he's a stubborn guy to protect those southern uh, marshes, right? To, to the southern border of the northern kingdom, in, in, in a sense. That was his his guard. It's, that's his, it was his title when he was fighting with with rob so um yeah i don't know it's either uh staying st he could he could stay close he could also hide right in around uh river run and, and just know the land and, and be uh nearby he could take the mountain road uh, as, as another theory that's been proposed he could seek the krenig men that's another idea that people have proposed is that he might go up to Greywater watch and find refuge there a place of safety he is a blackfish um and seems he like he yeah he could maybe he could you right know, that would be a that would be a cool way to bring in howland reed yeah yeah be an itch it, it would it, because we don't have anybody going there it just would be uh it'd be, it'd be really cool and i don't see so at one point i thought okay what about lady stoneheart is it possible that he would get back to his niece but i really feel like jamie now and, and brianne are, are going down that path and and they'll they'll cross with lady stoneheart first uh but it, it could be 
down the line, maybe not winds of winter, but further down the line, he may come across uh, Lady Stoneheart, just, just depending on how far her role is going to, or how long her role is going to continue, I guess I should say. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, so just a couple different ideas on on Brendan Tully. And and he, and he is a really interesting character. I mean, he could have freed Edmure, as I said. Uh, that's a surprise. Some people that would be a surprise because they thought, well, family duty honor. Why didn't he do that? But again, um, he has other family members out there and a greater kind of hold to to sticking it out for his 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 family. Um, he's the word the 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 words um, rock and or the rock are referenced a lot uh, to him. Uh, he could sneak into the twins and kill some of the phrase. That's another idea that has been put out there. He could try to reach another place in Westeros, like King's Landing, Dorne, Her Heron Hall. Uh, but which, but which of those places, and then why? Like, what's the reason? Where, where would he go? You know, Barristan Selmy, when he leaves King's Landing, he goes under a guise. Right? He's a very yes. well-known individual, so people feel a lot like Brendan Tully is is the same. He's uh, a well-known knight and and a higher lordling, if you will. And he would be known, but if Barristan can sneak by, I feel, I feel like Brendan could uh, as well. So where does he go? Who does he turn to? And that's where you look to family being that, that tie that's, that is, is strongest for him. And he's going to try to find a family member, I believe. Yeah. 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 And then again, yeah. And then if he goes to Sansa, that just, it... cause you know, in the, in the show, it's Sansa escapes from, uh, Ramsey and then essentially Brienne serves as sort of her protector. If Sansa decides to move or, or march or whatever, we're gonna have to see how, what sort of because it seems like Sansa's identity is about to be revealed to a lot of people there at the Vale. They're mm -hmm. gonna realize, hey, she's actually somebody else. So if he shows up at the same time, now she's got some some backing at least with the Riverlands to begin to potentially make moves because she's learning and getting and you know getting trained in the in essentially from Littlefinger, how to play the game. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. L let me read. Um, I, I have pulled up here just uh, one, two, three, four. They're very short, just two paragraphs each, um, different theories. Because So that was a really long, tons of evidence. I love that kind of stuff when you can go through and pull a lot of evidence through to say this is um, a path that someone could take and, and referencing no man's land and making the connections between the Brienne chapters. Like Brienne also moves Jamie off of the the blackfish scent, if you will, or or, or the hunt mm -hmm. for the blackfish a bit by by taking him to, to Lodi, Lady Stoneheart. So that was kind of cool to use her chapters to open up that path. But here we go. Four likely theories. Um, I really do not think anymore that the blackfish will come north, but I believe that he will show up somewhere and do something. Uh, maybe it'll be a surprise. Here we go. Uh, four ideas. Theory A, staying close. Uh, the most likely move is that Brendan is somewhere hiding and gathering support, going for guerrilla warfare. The easiest area for him to do that would be in the Riverlands. It is his home area. He knows the land and the people know him. As a Tully, he may find support here. Lannisters and Freys are not the only well-liked rulers. Even if finding help does become difficult, the small folk suffered out of his stubbornness. The lords may be more forgiving. The Blackfish supported their cause uh, of defending their homeland. Also, Jamie Lannister thinks that this may be the case, mentioning it when he uh when we when we when we meet him in a dance with dragons so uh taking on george R. R. martin's view of constructing a thrilling storyline that could be especially interesting because with jamie stoneheart brianne gendry um and so on we have uh, the phrase the brotherhood we would have quite a number of protagonists in such a small area uh, a blackfish slash stoneheart confrontation could give the story a nice turn the blackfish's attitude would even fit into the Brotherhood's pattern of not uh, forgiving and not forgetting. So that's theory A, uh, staying close to home. Uh, theory B, the mountain road. He could fight or sneak his way up the high road and into the Vale. By the time he arrived at the Bloody Gate, he would surely have heard about Lysa's death. Uh, so his great nephew's security could, be, could become his primary goal. He could even ask Peter Baelish for help. We don't know what he thinks about Littlefinger. Maybe they are on good terms, question mark. If not, he simply has to find some lord uh, that uh, some lords that are not too happy with Littlefinger as a ruler, the remaining lords to Clarence. And that's what I brought up earlier, that theory, that commoner who talked about his connection to the lords to Clarence 
uh, through the Wainwoods. Uh, in the Vale, he surely knows which lords would be the best to ask for shelter. Some of them even wanted to follow Rob. He might find supporters in them. Jamie's aunt, um, I always I mispronounce her name, Gina, uh, I think is, is Lannister, said something along these same lines. She feared that if Edmure were killed and Brendan survived, he would claim River Run in his or Sweet Robin's name. This means um, uh, implicitly that that Gina thinks he would seek shelter in the Eyrie. I don't know how to say her name. Anyways. Yeah. Um, in the Vale, readers know there is another thing for Brendan to do if he meets Sansa, even for the first time. He is one of the few who would immediately recognize her as her mother's daughter. With Littlefinger, Sansa, Harry the Heir, Maya Stone, Sweet Robin, uh, Bronze, Bronze Yon, the uh, Lord's Declarant, and the Blackfish, the setup in the Vale could also be very interesting in terms of story telling. Uh, two more here. Theory, theory C, Seek the Krennigmen, which I thought this was really one of the coolest ideas. Um, Brandon could seek out Hall and Reed and find a safe place at Greywater Watch. That is still possible. But where to go from there? Does he does he even know how Hall and Reed or does he even know Hall and Reed and how to find him? Even the northern lords do not recognize Reed's importance. Rob has to point it out to them in one of his last chapters. Um, how could the Blackfish know that Hallen could be the key to the north and might have some valuable information? In addition, the northern resistance had not built a common base by the time he escaped from, from River Run, and not even later in A Dance with Dragons. The Reeds fight at the neck. Nobody except Davos, and not before A Dance with Dragons, knows uh, Wyman Manderley's intention. And the Karstarks do their own stuff, and the clans are, at the moment, on Stannis' side. Roose Bolton sits in Winterfell, and the Mormonts are invisible. The Umbers split and or shocked. Uh, the Glovers, who knows. Uh, Hal and Reed may have some mission for the Blackfish, but the only reasonable mission Reed could give Brendan Tully is to get, quote, Arya back. But he has never met her. How could he find her and get her out, notwithstanding the problem of finding trustworthy ally allies in the north? There is no point for Reed to send him north. All right, one more. Um, theory D, the wolf in the belly. Brendan is somewhere hiding in the real and presumably pregnant Jane Westerling. Or uh, is, is somewhere hiding. Oh, he is somewhere hiding the real and presumably right, right. pregnant uh, Jane Westerling. I was never a fan of this theory, mostly because it's based on only a handful of descriptive sentences that could be interpreted in one way or another. Um, how he managed to bring a pregnant girl out of a besieged castle is one of the bigger flaws in the story. In addition to that, uh, with young Aegon, Mance's son, John, there would be too many hidden babies out there, and the parallels between John Connington and Brendan uh, Tully would be too obvious that the Blackfish is really um, homosexual. Uh, after A Dance with Dragons, this possibility does not exist for me. Uh, if, it, if it still proves true, it supports my point that the Blackfish is not uh, in the North. With a pregnant girl, you could simply... You simply uh, do not try to sneak her into a war-shattered, unknown, rough region before a cold winter front. You go hiding somewhere and try to get her to a, a place that's warm, secret, and safe where she can bear the child, especially if the child could be your next king. So for me, I will, first of all, a couple things there um, on, on those theories. The one that I'm, I'm liking the most is actually, eat, well, I don't know. They're both, they're all, there's three interesting ones. Stay close. And and do what he can and make make interesting um, make River Run more interesting. Come across Lady Stoneheart, uh, Brotherhood without banners, sneak around, guerrilla warfare, all that stuff. The mountain road is the one we just discussed to to get back. It's not necessarily the same path, not not really the mountain road, but um, it's a path to the Vale, right? Uh, the 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 Krennigmen going to Greywater Watch. I don't know. Again, that would be really interesting. I don't know what that conversation is like, or if there's something that Brendan doesn't know. The one I didn't know about here, buddy, was that there might be a real, an actual pregnant Jane Westerling that he snuck out. And that Dude, I think I a hundred percent think so because the whole there, they, the fact that they make such a deal, I mean, the fact that they make such a deal about her in yeah. that she could have been pregnant. Well, she's not allowed to be pregnant. Right. And we need to make all this stuff to make sure that what's the point of all that. Unless she is. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, there's that's interesting. I'm just looking here. There are some some theories out there. One about her still being pregnant. Um, 
But then just that, I don't know. Well, she is know. supposed to be in the prologue of when's a winner. Right. And why? If she's if she's not pregnant, then then nothing. Then she, her character is like doesn't mean What's anything the, going forward. Yeah, if she's that big of a deal, why is she going to be the opening? You know? Right. If she's not pregnant, then what's the point? Right. Okay. Of use of her being in any plot point going forward. Again, I mean, really, I mean, is there is there a reason to it? She she no longer really has any value unless she's pregnant. Right. If she's pregnant, she's in she's in ridiculously valuable because. She has the true heir of Winterfell. What in the heck, man? A new... Yeah, people were talking all about this prologue and what George said. Um, Yeah, he's confirming it. But again, he look, we said, we, we've mentioned that he might be changing some of that stuff. But the fact that he even had an idea for it, and it's well... It's, it is said. Um, it's, a, it's a video I, I put up here and where he's talking about it uh, 31 minutes into some conversation. But yeah, dang. I mean, all right, you know, so how are you feeling about those? Theories? Any, any one that might, you know, kind of stick out or likelihood or just your own ideas and thoughts on, on where on his, his importance, significance. Yeah. I, I to me, ultimately, I think he's going to end. I seems like he's going to go to the veil and serve as some sort of advisor to Sansa. And he's going to help propel Sansa out of the veil into her next role, which I don't think is going to be Winterfell like we see in the show, whether it's marrying young Griff or perhaps leaving, uh, taking the army of the veil to help take back the Riverlands. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're going to be going towards King's Landing. I think King's Landing's arc is going to be dealing with young Griff and the faith and winds of winter. There's only one book. I mean, you can't fit everything in there. But I think that's the I think I think the majority of the stuff going on in King's Landing that the Lannisters are going to have to face is going to be the veil or excuse me, the young Griff's siege on the Stormlands, which are just next door and dealing with the faith. So I don't think Sansa is going to be sending troops or the veil is going to be sending troops on there. I think her she's going to be found out. And then if the Blackfish shows up. Now she's got somebody who knows what he's doing with like a military. So. Hmm. Wow. Let me. So just turn this into a three parter. <laughs> Freaking. Yeah, no, I love your thoughts on that. Yeah. And, and I, I agree with you in terms of like his significance and then, you know, who he might be trying to, to, to locate or where he might be going. Um, but this, this Jane Westerling piece has got me thrown here for a second. Let me read this to you. So. Um. Wow, there's discrepancies that people are pointing to toward like I guess there was some miswrite up on her on her hips and some of her physical description. Uh the Blackfish makes a big deal to Jamie about not forking over Rob's queen only to ditch her at River Run anyway. Uh Edmure goes into River Run to negotiate the surrender and ends up looking uh quite pleased afterwards. Is this just because Blackfish escaped, or is it something else that's that's got him? happy and pleased is it besides just blackfish getting away um jane is extremely upset and wounded when jamie first meets her and sybil says the wound is from taking um her crown away the crown is never seen by or surrendered to jamie though catelyn and jamie both have um diverging opinions of jane's beauty this is one this one is very easy to put down it's just subjective opinion but if they're both describing you know and that one says she's beautiful, one says she's not. I mean, I don't know. Uh, Jane's sister uh, had been at River Run with her family, but she is not seen or referred to at all. Okay, she had a sister. We're talking sister swap here. Um, including in the inventory of prisoners, when the Westerlings leave the castle, Jamie never sees her or thinks of her. Jane departs River Run with uh, her head covered in a hooded cloak and uh, having ripped her clothing the hood's meaning is clear enough. No one can see her face, as in uh, see that this is Jane. Once she's out of the castle and back among the Westermen, who might know her and the ripped clothing could conceal uh, that it wasn't actually made for her if someone else is wearing clothes known to be Jane's. I don't know, man. Interesting stuff just to think about. Some people are saying they might be on the run together. Some people are saying she's actually on her way back to the Westerlands. Uh, some people are saying that 
I can we try? I don't know. That's that's interesting. Never really looked into it much. I figured she's being fed the, you know, she's taking what is the 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 tea and stuff to kind of. I mean, the simple fact that George is spending time talking about how this character who once Rob Stark is gone should have no significant value to the plot going forward. Right. Is they're trying to make sure she's not pregnant. Seems to be that she's got to be pregnant. Yeah. Otherwise, why she's no longer she's no longer essential to the plot. Yeah. Why spend all that time really, 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 really confirming, confirming, confirming? Like it's all right. like, no, I can see you bringing her in and everyone thinks, oh, she's going to be the saver. And then you kill her off. That could, you know, that mm -hmm. seems like something George would do. Yeah. Uh, but. If she's not pregnant, then what's the what's the point? Right. The whole right. deal is she could have the. She could have uh, the the heir of Winterfell. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's a big freaking deal. That's a big freaking deal. It's a huge deal if she does. People are talking. I mean, there's people are like breaking down some of what her mother says and uh, lots of different things about about Jane. So I've not done much digging up on on Jane or even thought much about it. Really, I kind of took took it all at uh, which you never should do. As you know, this you shouldn't take things at face value and just believe. Uh, the obvious that there's 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 trickery there's all mm -hmm. sorts of uh, matt always says it look how many characters you know are end up being other people or disguised right or, everyone jokes oh you can't have all these people have secret identities well there's a lot of people who do have secret identities they're right. like again uh reek is ramsey bolton that's confirmed right uh mm -hmm. alliris sorella sand Blood Raven as Maynard Plum. I mean, there's a lot. Right. Yeah. Um, all right, I like it. So I hopefully, I mean, if you guys have any uh, like links or thoughts or Ravens on on Jane, I think that would be kind of interesting. That was the one that kind of um, is, is sticking out to me. Really, regardless of whether he has Jane, uh, the true Jane Westerling or something crazy like that, um, I do think he's going to seek out his family. And I do think he has important information or just a skill set that can be useful to Sansa, uh, to to Sweet Robin, even Jon Snow. If, if it comes to that, Lady Stoneheart, him, him meeting her and, and talking to her would be very fascinating. You know what I mean? I feel like we want to see her come across one of her old um, one of her children or her uncle. That would be. Yeah. You know, she was fond of him. They were. I mean, yeah. Close. So, yeah awesome all right guys hey with that as always thank you so much for listening be sure to hit up our patreon or apple premium if you want to go that route you do get access to all of the extended edition content and extra content that we do for all of our projects across the board including the star wars podcast hyperspace hangout wheel of time podcast heroes of the horn we have a harry potter podcast called the elder one yeah. and just always cranking out stuff uh, so you can go that route as well. And with that, guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And remember that winter is coming. <laughs>